Rob Kircher, and this is Better Health and Greater Wealth. Down this dirt road is the most amazing place that we're going to take you to in just a few minutes. It's a six-acre USDA certified organic farm owned by Nick Batty, and he's an incredible guy. And I got to tell you something, it's like going into a part of old Florida, like it was hundreds of years ago, quite frankly. It's the most serene and pleasant place I've seen in a long, long time. And he is an organic farmer that I would say is head and shoulders above every organic farmer I've met before as well. And that says a lot. So folks, follow me and we're going to go and meet Nick Batty. Well, folks, this is Nick Beatty that I was telling you about earlier. One of the things I find so fascinating about you is um, your your background, your culture. You actually were born in South Africa, correct? Yes. Um, my, my family, my mom and dad and sister moved to the United States in 1984. But I was born in a little country called Swaziland, which is kind of on the South Africa-Mozambique border. And it's still one of, uh, it's still a kingdom today, has a reigning king, King Maswati. And so I grew up in, in an agricultural community there where my dad was involved with a pineapple scheme. Oh, really? And they, were, they had a big cannery in Swaziland and they were, they were um, producing fresh, fresh pineapple there. So it's really been in your blood, I mean, really from the very get-go, if you will. Yeah, yeah. When the, you know, when the fruit starts to get orange like this, yeah. if you get it about halfway, three quarters up, you got a pretty good quality. Yeah. That's at a pretty good stage of ripeness yeah. right there. What do you do this job? My kind of niche is that I am harvesting my vegetables and getting them to the customer on the same day. And, um, and then I'm also practicing organic practices. Um, we, we try to use um, efficient methods of irrigation and uh, try to uh, use cover cropping to enrich our soils every year. Um, you know, we, a lot of what we do here has been based on what we have learned from our customers at the market because uh, you start out, you know, selling something and other people recommend you try other things and we, we try to work with um, a variety of ethnicities so that um, and, and take recommendations for them. Fantastic. Well, why don't we follow Nick and we'll see what he's harvesting. Uh, what is this? This is a variety of kale. It's a Russian variety of kale. Um, it's been selected for this time of year because it, it seems to perform better in, in the heat in the early part of our winter. That looks like it'll make a perfect salad, I'll tell you that right yeah, now. Yeah, it's a very tender leaf. And uh, what do we have over here, Nick? What's this? This is a type of turnip. Um, it's a salad turnip or um, the variety name is Hawkeye. But this is another one that people really enjoy is arugula. Arugula? Oh my it, we, leave, we actually leave the roots on it. You could take that home and plant that if you wanted to. Wow. But we take this and we give it a good wash and take it down to the... I'm going to take some of that home with me for sure. But this is a mixture of greens, kind of a braising green. Um, it has lots of mustards in it and has a nice spice if you put it in a salad. Wow. That is a nice color. Unbelievable. Nothing like smelling uh, Mother Nature. Nick, I gotta tell you something, you are a pleasure, and I'm so happy to have met you, and um, I'll be coming to your firm a lot, believe me, but we're looking forward to catching up with you a little later this afternoon at the uh, the Purple Spoon, which is um, a culinary hub, if you will, in Benita Springs, and uh, you, Nick, you go there every Wednesday from three to six, right? Yes. Okay. And uh, it's owned by a very interesting person, her name is Chef Christina Sanfilippo, um, and she does exactly what Nick is talking about. She loves that fresh, if you will, from field to table in one day, and that's essentially what Nick is all about. We're here at the Purple Spoon in Benita Springs, Florida, and we're going to catch up with Nick Beatty here, because today is Wednesday and it's Farmer Market Day, so come on with us. So these are some of the vegetables that uh, Nick Beatty brought in from us. Absolutely fantastic. Take a look at these. And he's bringing more in as we speak. All ready for a eager crowd of buyers. 
As you can see, there's a waiting line here for mixed vegetables, and for a good reason, all fresh, right from the farm. you can actually save. Try one. Yeah. They're very peppery. In Hawaii, they make a salad dressing out of them. A little bitter, but they're very good for digestion. I actually like them. Yeah. I gotta tell you, um, I'm, a, I'm a true fan of yours uh, because I really like what you're doing, where your, your head is, where your philosophy is. Organic is a term that is certified or granted by the USDA if you right. meet certain standards. Now there are wonderful guidelines. It's absolutely a better option than a lot of the conventional items that are out there, but it's not the end all. My focus is to know where our food comes from. Okay. I want to know who's growing the food. I want to know who's raising the animals. I want to know how it's brought to market. I want to know how it's butchered, um, what they are, what the animals are fed. We are what our, an our mm -hmm. food eats. We are what our food grows in. So right. what happens with the soil? You need to understand what happens from the beginning all the way down to produce shows up at market or it shows up on my cutting board to go into your plate. Right. So while organic is a great backup option, it's not my only standard. So definitely how they're cared for. Uh, the humane element is vital. Grass-fed, free-range, pasture-raised is how the animal should be raised. We sh no animal should be in any confinement. Right. There's just no, no reason. It's not we healthy. We were talking about chickens the other day with the immovable yes. cages, if you will, which yep. uh, I think is good. Actually, the farmer who grows these papaya yep. and the citrus, they have those movable bin or movable. Hen houses? Hen houses, yeah. Well, hen houses, <laughs> yeah. but hen houses, yes. Yeah, yeah, hen houses. And they pull it behind the tractor, and the cool thing is they get to move around. They're um, getting the grubs or the, the insects from the ground as they move around the farm. And then when all of the product starts to come to market, the stuff that's not all perfect and pretty for market goes to the chickens. Yeah. So the chickens are eating papaya and citrus and tomatoes and strawberry. Right. That is an amazing diet. That is incredible. I and we that. get that back in the eggs. So it comes to yeah. yeah. Apparently it's my career anyway, so. A lot of people underestimate the power of flavor and also of the life-giving force of the bones. This is braised beef ribs from Three Stones Ranch. Uh, Dabo is on property all the time. He knows these animals, he knows the cowboys, he knows what happens with the, the entire process. So he's able to sit down with our guests and explain that whole process to them for how the animal, so they're going to be able to taste something that's cooked with bones. They're going to be able to taste in the same dish, the softer meat, the lemon boil cut. And they're going to have the bison as a steak, so it'll get the real pure essence of a lean and they're able to in their portfolio to find the vineyards that do things biodynamic, organic, sustainable. All these different philosophies that actually are really pretty ancient. France, Spain, Italy, yep. they happen to have those traditions instilled in a lot of their, you know, two, three hundred year old vineyards. Well, it smells fantastic, I will say that. Yeah. Well, we're only at the start. This has about eight more hours ahead of it, and yeah. a lot of herbs, and a lot of time of low, slow. How many people can you actually, uh, any one, 
bitter, let's say? Uh, my seating capacity here is 30. It's 30, okay. Mm -hmm. yep. And that is for our dinners. For and your cooking lessons is what? For le uh, co uh, cooking classes, it's 20. And the reason 20. I cap it at 20 is more than classes are recipes, but we also talk about where the food comes from, where do you source it, how do you make it at home, how do you make it ahead? How do you make your braids four days ahead so when your guests come out on Saturday night, you're not stressing it or staring this and making this mess in your kitchen right. when they're showing up in two hours? You want to make it on how to, how to set yourself up in your kitchen, how to use the right equipment, do you have the right cans, do you have the right tongs, do you have the right fish spatula, do you have the right spatulas, do you have the right herbs and 